So my dear children, in the earlier chapter, we discussed several things related to the photosynthesis part, right? Now, within this part, we are discussing. So at the end of that uh, chapter, I told you that there should be a mechanism in order to transport these things. These things means the substances which being produced during the process of photosynthesis. And we have discussed that these substances are mainly getting stored as starch within the plant leaf. Then after that, in the process of transportation, these things are getting converted into a sugar solution. Then after that, through a special kind of a tissue which is referred as the phloem tissue, these substances are getting transported to relevant places in the plant. So now within this chapter, we'll be discussing what are the methods that a plant is going to use in transporting different substances. Not like that some uh, food substances, but also there are different substances which are getting transported all around the pl plant parts. For another example, water, right? You know that water is getting absorbed from the plant right water is getting water is being absorbed from the plant by using the root hairs okay simply we'll mention that thing as roots then so roots is going to absorb the water necessary for the process of photosynthesis we discussed that that thing in the earlier chapters right so there should be a mechanism in order to travel these water from one part, from one place to another. So we'll be discussing those things within this part mainly. Okay. Then after that, you know that for the uh, process of uh, photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is really important. And I told you that carbon dioxide is getting absorbed, absorbed by the plant leaves through small pores or holes which are referred as stomata right but however my dear children there should be a mechanism there should be a way right there should be a process a special kind of a process on how these things are getting absorbed by the plant leaf so we'll be discussing those things within this chapter right so here we are discussing mainly about the transportation of substances by a plant transportation right so there are several transportation methods okay there are several transportation methods in the earlier like a like few minutes ago i explained several examples so we'll be considering what are these transportation methods in a plant and how they are going to occur mainly right so let's let, let head on to t, head, let's head on to see what are our contents then so plants in taking the raw materials for different biological processes and taking the products of these processes to the appropriate places of the plant is known as transportation so it's really simple you know that plant is going to absorb several substances and these substances should be transported to relevant places as well as plant is going to produce several substances during their biological processes. It can be, it, it can be excretory substances like oxygen or it can be necessary or main products like glucose. During the photosynthesis you know that plant is going to produce glucose which is very essential for the plant. Right? And oxygen is a byproduct. So oxygen is getting expelled from the plant. Right? So, but there should be a different method. There should be a method. There should be a different method or same method in order to remove this oxygen and in order to transport that glucose. Right? In simple, we can say that food. So there should be a method to transport this food and to remove oxygen. Right, so transportation of these substances to relevant places and absorption of different particles or substances which are important for the plant. Right, so we'll be discussing about these processes, how those things are going to happen mainly in here under the transportation part. 
some examples are given below. Now, some examples for the transportation process is given in these 1, 2 and 3 uh, instances. So, we will see what are those instances then. Transportation of atmospheric air through the stomata to the cells of the leaf. Now, you know that our atmosphere contains oxygen gas. Our atmosphere contains carbon dioxide gas. Each and every plant absorb oxygen gas for their respiration process. Each and every plant need oxygen gas for their respiration. Each and every plant need carbon dioxide for the photosynthesis process. So, plants are going to absorb both carbon dioxide and oxygen. Carbon dioxide is for the photosynthesis. Oxygen is for the respiration. So, exchange of these gases with the atmosphere right or else we can say transportation of these gases with the atmosphere right so that is an example for transportation next one transportation of water and minerals from soil to the leaves through root hairs so root hairs are going to absorb now in the earlier chapter also we discussed that root hairs are going to absorb water and minerals which are essential for the plant during the process of photosynthesis and any other biological processes. Okay, minerals are needed in, in uh, different biological processes for the plant. Right, so these things are absorbed by the plant uh, plant roots. Okay, root hair especially. So the plant root is going to absorb water. However, that water is being transported to the plant leaf for the photosynthesis process. So there should be a method, there should be a mechanism in order to transport this water from roots towards the leaves. Okay, so that, a good ex that is a good example for transportation part. The next one is given, transportation of food produced by photosynthesis from leaves to other parts of the plant. Transportation of food produced by photosynthesis from leaves to other parts of the plant. So, this is also I gave you as an example like few minutes earlier. You know that food is getting transported all around the plant, but these things or these food items are getting prepared only in plant leaves, right? Most of the times in plant leaves. There are other locations as well, but however, the main organ which carry out the uh, which carries out the uh, photosynthesis is the plant leaf. So, within the plant leaf, food is getting prepared. Food means in simple glucose. So, there should be a method in transporting these food items to relevant places in the plant. So, we will be discussing how these things are going to occur. What is the process which these things are being transported all around the plant body. So, these are several examples where we come across with the transportation in a plant, right? So, in detail, we'll be discussing what are the methods that a plant use in transporting these substances, okay? So, transportation means in simple, that's the method, right? Actually, methods which a plant is going to use in transporting different substances throughout the plant. It can be substances which are essential for biological processes or else substances which are being removed or excretory substances which are being removed from the plant. However, there should be a special method or methods in transporting these substances away from the plant or towards the plant or within the plant itself. So, these are those examples where the transportation is being mainly used. So, now we are going to discover what are these methods and how these methods are going to occur within the plant, the process. So, let's see and let's study about the first method of transportation, right? So, we are going to discuss the first method of transportation right now. The first method is called the diffusion. So, first of all, a point given, there should be a mechanism within the plants for transportation 
let us do the activity given to study about it right now there are several methods of transportation my dear children especially we are discussing about several transportation methods in this chapter which are related with a plant under that the first and foremost transportation method is the diffusion right so before i am going to start with the diffusion process let me ask you a few questions number 1 if you add laundry blue right if you add laundry blue into a water right into a basket of water you can observe that laundry blue particles will spread all around the all around the basket right and at the end like after few hours you could observe that the colorless nature of water is getting converted to blue color even we discuss these things under the discontinuous nature of particles you know that when water is going to arrange their particles these particles are going to contain several spaces right these particles are going to contain several spaces that's what do you mean by the discontinuous nature right so when you are adding laundry blue into water laundry blue particles will travel along these spaces and fill those gaps so by that way the blue color is getting spreaded but hmm, that's the explanation but how what is the process or what why uh, what kind of a transportation process or by what kind of a traveling process is going to use in that moment by the laundry blue how it is going to happen why it is going to happen why does the laundry blue laundry blue articles are going to spread here and there within the water what's the mechanism which that's going to happen so we'll be discussing about that thing in here okay so in order to identify that process we are going to do a small bit of an experiment same as to the laundry blue situation but here instead of laundry blue we are using condis potassium permanganate or condis crystals okay so here you are given with the materials so we'll identify what are the materials that we need first of all we'll be needing condis condis crystals the chemical name for condis crystal is potassium permanganate potassium permanganate this is the chemical name for condis potassium permanganate then we'll be needing water we'll be needing water and definitely we'll be needing a container like a beaker in order to hold this water so instead of uh, instead of you know like condis crystals we can use if you want we can use laundry blue as well okay so these are the materials that we need it's a really simple experiment even you can do it at your home also so we'll be needing condis crystals or potassium permanganate it is the chemical name we'll be needing water and a beaker in order to hold these substances so the method is really simple my dear children what you have to do you need to place some condis crystals within the water beaker and observe after few hours what's going to happen okay so let's head on to see the method then so here you are given with a figure right and within the figure you can see that at the bottom there are condis crystals right and uh, condis crystals are getting spreaded all over all over the beaker water beaker like this 
then after few hours you know that the entire beaker is getting converted into purple color because of the condis crystals or condis particles so we'll write down the method in doing this experiment first so it's really simple what you have to do put some water into the beaker then after that you need to add some condis crystals to it and you need to observe it after few hours so we'll write down the method put some water into the beaker put some water into the beaker then add condis crystals add condis crystals to the beaker and observe we'll write it in a separate point right so the third step is observe the setup observe the setup after few hours observe the setup after few hours right so this is the way of doing our experiment it's really simple what you have to do you have to add some water into the beaker then we need to add some condis crystals to the beaker as per to the given figure then we need to observe the setup after few hours right so you know what's going to happen in here already you have some experience in doing these kind of experiments under the lesson discontinuous nature but however let's repeat the experiment once again and see what's going to happen now in this lesson part i'm going to explain what's going to happen here and how it is going to happen okay so my dear children let's head on to the lab and we'll conduct this experiment and let's see what's going to happen over there right and how this is going to occur right by taking several observations we'll write down then our final conclusion like what's the process which these particles these condis particles are going to spread within water so let's head on to the lab and we'll conduct the experiment and we'll once again come back to write down our observations and conclusions okay my dear children now in this activity we'll be identifying how does the diffusion is going to work now within this activity first of all i'm going to use condis crystals right potassium permanganate or condis crystals as you can see here these th things are available as crystals condis crystals so i have a small bit of a condis crystal with me with a water beaker here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this condis crystal into the water beaker right so let's put another one near to it right now you can see that the gradual dissolution of color within the water now you can see once again the crisp the condis crisp near the condis crystals there are like streams of purple color which is going upward right it's because of now in in bottom area the concentration of the con condis is very high and in the top area the concentration or the number of particles right so the number of particles of condis is at the bottom it's very high okay at the bottom you can observe it it's very high see at the bottom there is large number of condis crystals
right so now it's getting dissolved very quickly because of now you can see that here in to the top also gradually coming to top as well it's because that due to the concentration difference right so at the bottom there are a large number of particles of condis so at the top very less number of condis particles so the concentration is greater at the uh, bottom part i'm talking about the condis my dear children then at the top part the concentration is low so therefore you can see a stream of condis see a stream of condis is coming from here to here gradually right so we have to leave it for some while and let's observe what's going to happen after some while so my dear children as you can see here now at the middle portion of the beaker now it has got turned into purple color a good purple color can be observed throughout the uh, beaker but however at the top like in this area there is still the colorless nature can be still observed it's because that the stream is coming very slowly right so now at the middle part you can observe right at the middle part you can observe the purple color very well so we'll leave it this system for a, some bit of a time and once again we'll observe what's going to happen uh, so my dear children now you can observe the entire solution has got turned into purple color it's because now the diffusion process has ended so entire solution has a uniform or else a constant composition now the composition means throughout the solution the number of particles are now equal that's why it is showing a unique purple color so this can lead us to a one conclusion particles are automatically getting turned or particles are automatically getting moved to a position from higher concentrated area to a lower concentrated area so this process is referred as the diffusion process as you can see here now the entire solution has got changed into purple color right in the earlier purple color could be observed only at the bottom however after some time you could observe that the purple color has completed or purple color has taken in the entire solution so this concludes the activity and our observation my dear children so let's head on to the classroom and we'll study what are the other things related to the lesson so my dear children you could observe that the color of the water beaker has been changed into purple color right purple color after few hours and over there i told you that when you are going to put a certain condis crystal to water beaker what mainly going what is going to mainly happen over there is at the place where the condis crystals are going to like at the place where the condis crystals are there the number of condis particles are very high there are a large number of condis particles at the place where condis crystals is there within the water beaker so due to having large number of condis particles the concentration of condis particles in a certain place is going to increase i mean the concentration of condis is very high at the bottom of the beaker what do you mean by this concentration the concentration means the number of particles contained within a unit space or unit volume number of particles contained within a unit volume or unit space right let's take a simple example like this there is a room and within this room there are like hundreds of people who are tightly packed within the room okay hundreds of people which are tightly packed within a room so i think you in our day to day life 
you have also come across with these kinds of experience when you are traveling in buses right in a peak time period buses have like several passengers so sometimes these buses are like filled up in total i mean like there is no space at all so in that case right as soon as the bus is going to stop near a bus stop several people are getting down they don't want to get down from that kind that place or that bus stop but however in order to free up their arms right in order to take some kind of a freedom they're getting down from the bus i think you have seen it right so in the same way if i'm going to if i'm going to tightly pack several number of people or large number of people to a room and i'm going to keep it over there for a simple like five minutes then i'm going to open a door from one end not the main door but a different kind of a door which is able to which is going to release that pressure from the room so in that case what will happen all the people not all the people but some people would definitely move from that place to a different place through that to through that door it's because it's difficult to stay in there no right it's very difficult to stay in there there is no room there is no room in there is no space okay so when i am going to open a certain door by using that entrance or by using that exit people will definitely move to a different place where they can be free so my dear children this is a simple example to explain this process so at the place i told you that at the place when i am going to put water into the beaker and i'm going when i'm going to put condensed crystals at the place where condensed crystals are there within the beaker at that place there are a large number of condensed particles right at that place there are a large number of condensed particles in the same way where that bus is going to travel within the road so bus has several passengers bus is tightly packed with the passengers right now so there is no room particles are tightly packed particles don't like to be packed tightly they would like to roam free here and there so as soon as the bus is going to stop in a certain bus stand several people are going to come down and they are going to right not going to go but however they are going to come down and be free from that tight situations right so the same thing is going to occur in the condensed particles as well at the bottom there are a large number of condensed particles so condensed particles are going to find out some kind of a free space so that they can travel it's that it's because that particles would like to travel to a free space they would they won't like to be very uh, tightly packed they won't like to be in a place where tightly packed like in the same way where i'm where that room filled with people when i'm going to open a door people are going to go out for sure so that they can be free the same thing applies for the particles as well they would love to be free so condensed particles at the bottom they are going to spread all around the water beaker so that they can be free so condensed particles automatically going to travel from a place where they have high number of particles to a place 
where they have less number of particles. Okay. That's a process which is going to happen automatically. Right? Automatically that thing is going to happen. Like in the room. I am going to title pack several people and open a certain door from the other end. Definitely people will move and they will be free. When that bus is going to stop on a certain bus stand, several people will go down and they will be free for a certain moment. So in the same way at the bottom, there are a large number of condensed particles. But however, they are being tightly packed here now as there are several particles near the bottom. So these particles will gradually travel towards up and towards the either side of the beaker. Right? That's what's going to happen in here. So my dear children, that's the explanation how this process is going to occur. So we'll write down our observation and conclusion. Then after that, once again, I'm coming into my explanation part on how these particles would travel. Okay, so first of all, we'll write down our observation and conclusion from the activity. So our observation was quite simple. Beaker. Well, let's say water beaker. Water. Water beaker. turns to water beaker or else we will mention just water it's not the beaker no so we will mention as water water turns to water turns to purple color after some time right water turns to purple color after some time right you could observe that thing right very clearly then the conclusion is conclusion is why does the water is getting turned into different color from the colorless situation it's because that Condis particles are going to spread all around the water beaker. That's why the color is getting changed. Condis has a purple color. So that purple color is getting spreaded all over the beaker. So that's why the whole beaker is getting converted into purple color. Right. So we can say that Condis particles. Condis particles. spread all around the water beaker condis particles spread all around the water beaker that's why we can observe like this kind of a color this kind of a purple color if the condensed particles are going to look, if, if, the, if the condensed particles are going to go to a certain kind of a place only, then that place would have the purple color, right? That place only would, will have the purple color. Like in the, uh, like in the earliest occasion, where I'm going to put that condensed particles, right? As soon as I'm going to put that condensed crystal, the purple color was only at the place where the condis part where the condis crystal was located. After some time, it's getting spreaded into all around the beaker. But at the place or at the time when I'm going to insert the crystal, the purple color can be observed only at the place where the crystal is found. Right? So it will take some time in order to travel all around, all around the beaker. But however, at the end, definitely, 
condensed particles would travel all around the beaker. That's why we can observe a purple color within the water all around the beaker itself. Okay. So, these are our observations and conclusions. So, our observation is quite simple. Water turns to purple color after some time. Why water is getting cut, converted into a purple color? Because condensed particles spread all around the water beaker. That's why we can obtain a purple color. Right. So, once again, I mean, I'm going to come to my explanation part. So, let's head on to see the explanation then. So, my dear children, by using this figure now, I am going to explain how this process of displacing or transportation of condis particles is going to happen. So, spreading of condis in water can be described using the figure. So, like I told in the case, where I am going to, where I am going to put several people into a certain room, and I'm going to tightly pack it. Then after that, from a corner or to or from a different place, I'm going to open a certain door. Right. So at that case, I uh, you could observe that those people would definitely come out from that room and travel here and there, and they would be free. In a place where, in a place where there are a large number of particles. The particles would never like to be in such kind of a place. They would like to roam here and there very freely. That's the behavior of the particles. Even you guys are like that. Even we human are like that. Not even, not, not like we, but each and every animal is like that. They would love to be free. They would love to go here and there. They don't like to be trapped in a certain place. In the same way, the particles are also going to behave. When I'm going to put a certain condis crystal like this into water, at these places here, you can see there are a large number of condis particles right now. See, at this place, condis particles are very tightly packed and there are a large number of condis particles. See. Each and every pebble over here is going to show condis particle. So, condis, as there are a large number of particles, the concentration is high. Concentration is high. What do you mean by the concentration? Concentration means number of particles contained within unit space or unit volume. If the particle, if the number of particles are very high contained within a certain space, then the concentration is high. Concentration can be defined to a certain substance like for water or condis. Now within this place, within this place over here, there are large number of condis particles. So, the condis concentration is very high in here. Like a room, when there are a large number of people, like a bus, which is a tightly packed one. Okay. Large number of particles can be observed over here. So, the concentration is high. Check the term, my dear children, concentration. Concentration means number of particles in unit space or unit volume. So, as there are a large number of particles, condis particles now finding a place to travel and to be free. Okay. You know that. Water contains several spaces due to discontinuous nature, right? So, these condis particles which are, which are tightly packed over here, now they are going to travel to those spaces within water where they can be very free. So, automatically these condis particles would travel towards the water or travel towards a low concentrated area, right? Travel towards a low concentrated area. 
so that they could be free okay so in here what happens is particles are going to travel from a higher concentrated area or from high number of particles a area that has very high number of particles or higher concentrated area to a place that have less number of particles or less concentrated area right so that this is why when you are going to put certain amount of condensed crystals into water after some time you can observe the purple color all around the water beaker because at the place where you put the condensed crystals the condensed concentration is very high condensed concentration is very high but at the other places like in the top part of the beaker condensed concentration is very low so condensed particles will automatically travel from that high concentrated area to lower concentrated area okay so after some time condensed particles would travel to all around the or oh, to all the places around the beaker giving out a good purple color giving out a good purple color all around the beaker so this is what's going to happen when there are certain when there is a certain higher concentrated particles right automatically those particles would travel to lower concentrated area okay so my dear children let's go head on to the explanation once again when the cube of condis is put into water more particles of condis can be seen around the cube yes it's obvious no around these crystals or around this cube more particles of condis can be seen there are more condis particles that is the concentration of condis particles is high around the cube so which means the concentration is high right concentration is high concentration means number of particles contained within unit space okay number of particles contained within unit space or number of particles contained within unit volume that is what do you mean by the concentration so at the place where the condis cube is there right the concentration is very high which means there are more condis particles within a unit volume so high concentration means there are high number of condis particles within a unit volume unit volume means unit space right then there is less amount of condis particles in the upper part of the water beaker so it's really simple at the upper part in here there are very less number of condis particles right condis particles are very less okay so here you can see it over here it's in blue color but in over here is a purple color lower concentration of condis crystals or condis particles higher concentration of condis particles right see condis particles move randomly from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration so my dear children automatically what happens condis crystals or condis particles will definitely travel from this higher concentrated area to a lower concentrated area where they can be free like in a place where there are a large number of people in a limited room when i'm going to open the door people are going to move and so that they could be free right if you open a cage if you open a cage that's going to have several birds birds will fly so that they can be free higher concentrated area to a lower concentrated area 
if there are a large number of particles within a unit volume, they would love to travel to a different place that there are low number of particles, right? Particles would, would love to be free. They won't like to be in a tightly packed place. So as soon as they are a higher concentration, they would definitely travel to a lower concentrated area. That's how this mechanism works. So I have given you the two examples as well for that kind of a situation. So my dear children, let's see. This movement of particles occur not only in the liquid, not only in this liquid medium. Now this is water, no? Not only in water. This, goes, this is going to happen in each and every place. So, but also in gas medium as well. In gases also we can observe this thing. When you light up a incense stick, or when you use a perfume, right? When you light up a incense stick and you are going to place it at your home. Each and every place at your home can feel that smell. It's because that that smell or the particles would travel all around the house. Here also the same process is going to happen. What's the process? At the place where the incense, incense stick is there, that smoke, the concentration of those gas particles is very high. I'm talking about the incense stick, okay? The smoke particles, they have a high concentration We are the, we are the incense stick is there. But the other places of the room, they have a less concentration of those smoke particles. So automatically these smoke particles would travel to the places which has lower concentration. Right? Always particles would tend to do that. In a place where a perfume is applied, there are high number of perfume particles over here. So when I'm going to travel here and there or at a room, at a certain room, right? If, take a, if you take a room, so at the other places, right? There are very less number of perfume particles. So perfume particles will automatically travel from this place to different places because of the concentration difference. At the other places, there are no concern, there are no uh, perfume particles, so the concentration is low. At here, in my shirt, there are large number of perfume particles, so the concentration is high. So automatically, these perfume particles, gases, no, these gas particles will travel from this higher concentrated area to lower concentrated area. So in gas medium also, this is going to occur. So when skin of an orange is peeled off, the smell can be felt for a person who is even little far away. See, if you take an orange and you are going to peel it off. So that smell can even be felt to a person who, are, who is somewhat far away from that place. Right? When your mother in your when your mother in the kitchen, right, is going to make some pole sambal by adding, uh, you know, lemon or lime. You can feel the smell even you are not closer to the kitchen. It's because at the place where she is going to, you know, crush that lime. Okay, lime particles would have a high concentration. So automatically these lime particles would travel to a different place by taking that smell from it. That's why you can feel the smell of that lime particles. Okay. Same thing applies to here. When I'm going to peel off an orange, right? When I'm going to peel off an orange, even a person is not near to me, Right? Even a person is not near to me, can feel that smell, can feel that orange smell. How come? Because at here, 
that uh, gaseous particles has a high concentration at a different place low concentration so the particles would travel from this high concentrated area to lower concentrated area that's how it's going to work but there is a limited i mean like there is a limited distance that the particles can travel okay like they are not going to travel in kilometers kind of a distance like up to a certain distance only okay remember that they can't travel like kilometer kind of a distance but however it can spread like up to 10 to 5 meters okay if the center is much stronger then to even far it depends on the particle strength of the particles concentration of the particles but however they can travel up to a certain distance from a higher concentrated area to a lower concentrated area okay so next one let's see the explanation for this thing that is because the orange skin contains volatile materials ah now this is also important my dear children volatile materials what it, what do you do what do you mean by a volatile material a volatile material means a material or a particle that can turn into a gas at the room temperature or at a lesser temperature normally at the room temperature if there are particles that can be turned into a gas very quickly then those particles are called volatile components at lower temperatures they can turn into gas from liquid to a gas okay in simple they have less boiling points boiling point means the temperature at which a liquid turns into a gas so if they if a substance has a less boiling point automatically at a lower temperature these liquid particles would travel into gaseous state within a limited or within a small temperature so that's why if you take petrol if you're near a petrol shed you can feel the smell of the petrol it's because petrol is a volatile substance volatile means it's going to vaporize very quickly within the room temperature so that's why you can feel the smell of it so there should be volatile components as well in here in order to travel within a gaseous medium so volatile component means a component or else particles that can turn into a gas very quickly within a limited or within less amount of temperature in simple they have or these particles have or these substances have very less boiling point so that they can turn into a gas very quickly okay so because the orange skin contains volatile materials so this lemon lime orange these substances contain volatile materials within the skin so when you are crushing it those volatile like components are getting exposed to normal atmospheric temperature and they are getting vaporized these vaporized gas then travel here and there all over the room or certain place because of the concentration difference at the place when i am going to peel it at the place there is high concentration right in other places there is low concentration so the particles these gas gaseous particle can travel very quickly these volatile materials randomly move through air through the air from the higher concentrated area to the lower concentrated area so these substances would travel from a higher concentrated area to a lower concentrated area automatically so this is a good day to day example right where this cons due to concentration difference where particles would travel okay so let's see what are the other contents then this movement of particles occur not only in the liquid medium but also in gaseous medium we discussed that so the second example is given spread in the smell of joysticks joysticks means incense stick and the smell of perfumes 
right? Smell of perfumes is also done according to the above method. So I have told you how it's going to happen, right? So the second example, right? Second example for the gaseous medium distribution of particles, okay? Then the next one, spreading the smell of volatile fuel substances, right? Volatile fuel substances like petrol, diesel, see? Petrol, diesel, kerosene is also done according to the above method, right? So, these volatile fuels, right? These volatile fuels are also going to spread. The smell of these fuels are also going to spread like in the same way as the above. So, these are several examples which we can observe the same process but in a gaseous medium, my dear children, right? So, you know that particles are going to travel automatically from a higher concentrated area to a lower concentrated area, okay? That is happening because of the particles would like to be in free, right? They won't, they won't uh, or they will not be in a place where is less room or where is there, where there is less space. So, my dear children, the process in, in which the particles travel from a higher concentrated area to a lower concentrated area is referred as the diffusion. This is the one which is referred as the diffusion. Diffusion is the process of re removing particles or traveling particles from higher concentrated area to a lower concentrated area. Here this travel is going to happen because of the concentration difference. Right. So higher potential to a lower potential. You know that automatically water is going to drop down. Like in a waterfall. In the same way, from a higher concentrated area. Higher concentrated means higher the number of particles. To a place which has lower concentration. Less, less number of particles. Automatically, particles will travel. This process is referred as the diffusion. This process is the one which is referred as the diffusion. So, diffusion is the process, my dear children, where particles travel from higher concentrated area to a lesser concentrated area. From a place that has high number of particles to a place that has less number of particles. This is what do you mean by the diffusion, right? So, diffusion. So, what is diffusion? Once again, movement of particles or random movement of particles from a place that has high concentration to a place that has lower concentration. Okay, so this is the one which is referred as the diffusion. So we'll write down this thing, my dear children. Random movement of particles random movement of particles from from a place with high concentration from a place with high concentration to a place to a place with low 
to a place with low concentration. To a place with low concentration is called is called this is called diffusion is called diffusion so this is my dear children what do we mean by diffusion random movement of particles from a place with high concentration to a place with low concentration is called diffusion right this is called as the diffusion so diffusion is the process of movement of particles from high concentration or from a place that has high number of particles to a low concentrated area or to a place that has low number of particles this is the one which is referred as the diffusion okay diffusion my dear children right so diffusion is a main process in plants that helps for the transportation of substances Philovin are some instances where diffusion takes place and now diffusion is a very important transportation process that is in a plant in a plant diffusion process or the process of diffusion is being mainly utilized in transportation of substances into the plant and also out of the plant as well so here the first one is given diffusion of carbon dioxide from atmosphere to the plant leaves through stomata for photosynthesis ah my dear children now for the process of photosynthesis you know that carbon dioxide gas is very important and that carbon dioxide is taken from the atmosphere by plant leaves and through small pores which are called as stomata so how this is going to happen in atmosphere there are large number of carbon dioxide gases right there are large number of carbon dioxide not gases let's say particles right there are large number of carbon dioxide particles in the atmosphere but however within the leaf there are less number of carbon dioxide particles in atmosphere high number of particles within the plant leaf less number of particles what carbon dioxide particles so automatically what happens from those stomatal pores automatically gases from the atmosphere or carbon dioxide from atmosphere definitely travel towards the plant leaf high concentrated area to a lower concentrated area plant within the plant leaf less concentration at the atmosphere high concentration so uh, so automatically these carbon dioxide gas particles would travel from atmosphere towards the plant leaf through the stomatal pores right next one diffusion of oxygen through stomata to the leaves for respiration once again my dear children see diffusion of oxygen through stomata to the leaves for respiration large number of oxygen particles are available at the atmosphere but within the leaf there is less number of oxygen particles okay within the leaf there is less number of oxygen particles so in the same way which carbon dioxide is going to be absorbed in the same way oxygen is also going to be absorbed by the plant leaf 
through stomata because of the concentration difference. Outside high concentration, inside the leaf low concentration. Particles would automatically travel from a higher concentrated area to a lower concentrated area. That's what do you mean by the diffusion, right? Automatically this process is going to happen. So during the process of respiration, plant leaves are going to absorb oxygen gas through the process of photosynthesis, through the process of diffusion, okay, through the process of diffusion. Next one, oxygen, a product of photosynthesis, diffusing out of the stomata to the atmosphere. Now, during the photosynthesis process, during the photosynthesis process, inside the chloroplast, upon photosynthesis, large number of oxygen particles are getting produced. So, the oxygen particles within the cell is going to increase from time to time. So, as there are a large number of oxygen particles within the cell, at a certain time, they are going to release that oxygen particles to a different place. As there are a large number of oxygen particles, they have to remove it. So, automatically, when photosynthesis is going to happen, oxygen particles within the leaves are going to increase. But, however, if you take the atmosphere, there are less number of particles in the atmosphere that carries oxygen. How come? Atmosphere is very large, no? Our atmosphere is spreading all around the globe. So, how come there should be, how come there is less number of oxygen particles? If you are going to compare a leaf with the atmosphere of our earth, our atmosphere in the earth is, it's a very, it has a very large scale. So, there are, there are like heavy number of oxygen particles at the atmosphere. When you compare it with the leaf, then how could there be large number of oxygen particles within the leaf then? This is, that's what do you, that now in here my dear children, you have to come to the explanation of diffusion once again. Diffusion is being explained not only from the number of particles, but from number of particles in a unit space or unit volume, right? The volume is also very important in this diffusion process. Plant leaf has a very small space. Upon photosynthesis, large number of oxygen particles are getting tightly packed within this small space. That's why the concentration is getting increased compared to the environment outside. At the outside space, there is less concentration, less number of particles contained within unit volume, my dear children. Outside, the volume is large. Inside the leaf, the volume is smaller. That's why the concentration is getting increased within the plant leaf. Right? That's how the concentration is going to increase within the plant leaf. Here, the now, here not the number of particles being considered, but the volume which the particles are going to spread. So, open photosynthesis, right? Oxygen particles are going to produce but within a limited space. That's how the concentration is getting increased within the plant leaf upon photosynthesis. So, automatically these tightly packed oxygen particles would travel to outside through stomata as they need to be free. They won't like to be in a tightly packed situation. They would travel to a free space. So here my dear children and a very important factor, that factor is space. Within the plant leaf the space is very less. 
that's why the concentration is getting increased okay so within a plant leaf with a limited space there is high number of oxygen particles at the outside there is very much of a larger space but with less number of oxygen particles so automatically from that less space oxygen particles would travel to higher space okay place where has plenty of space so my dear children remember concentration is not giving out or not pointing out only about with the particles but with the space as well so the space is also very important or the volume is also really important less volume means higher the concentration more volume means lesser the concentration okay that's why when compared to a plant leaf and our atmosphere plant leaf has a high concentration of oxygen upon photosynthesis right then next one the products of respiration carbon dioxide and water vapor diffusing from stomata to the atmosphere now in the same way you know that upon respiration water vapor and carbon dioxide gas is going to be produced within the plant leaf so within a limited space there are a high number of water particles water particles means water vapor and high number of carbon dioxide particles within a limited space so automatically when respiration process is going to happen from time to time what will happen oxygen uh, like oxygen carbon dioxide is also going to expel through the process of diffusion right through the process of diffusion here also because of that space thing right carbon dioxide is getting expelled from the stomata okay leaf has a less space but more particles of carbon dioxide atmosphere has higher space but less number of carbon dioxide gases so the particles would travel definitely from the leaf towards the outer atmosphere right here the concentration is getting increased within the leaf because of less volume or less space within the leaf okay remember that thing concentration is not going to depend only with the particles number of particles but with the space as well in a limited space if there are a high number of particles then the concentration high okay right then so these are the examples where the diffusion can be observed within a plant leaf okay so diffusion of carbon dioxide from atmosphere to the plant leaves okay then diffusion of oxygen through stomata to the leaves of the plant for their respiration oxygen which is a product of photosynthesis is diffused out from leaves to the atmosphere then products of respiration like carbon dioxide gas and water vapor is going to or they're going to expel from the plant leaf by the process of diffusion okay so the same process is going to happen in each of these instances the process is diffusion traveling of particles from higher concentrated area to a lower concentrated area but remember when you are talking about the or when you are talking about or when you are considering about concentration there are two factors to be considered number one is the number of particles okay higher the number of particles higher the concentration not about number of particles but consider about the space as well if there is a limited space then the concentration is high if there are larger spaces or if they are if the space is much larger then the concentration is low okay so number of particles and space or the volume both are going to change the concentration of a certain substance right then so this is the diffusion my dear children i hope that you got a sound knowledge about the diffusion process right so remember diffusion means diffusion means the traveling of particles or movement of particles from a higher concentrated area to 
a lower concentrated area right diffusion means movement of particles from a higher concentrated area to lower concentrated area right so these are the examples where the diffusion is going to happen within a plant right then so within this chapter we discussed about the diffusion process how the diffusion is going to occur and what is the process of diffusion how it is going to happen and in day to day life also there are several instances where diffusion can be observed i have given you or i have provided you some examples as well so remember the diffusion process is not going to happen only in a liquid medium but in a gaseous medium as well so plants are going to utilize this process of diffusion in order to transport different substances all around the plant okay so this is all about it the diffusion first and foremost transportation process so my dear children i'm hoping to meet you with our next chapter by taking another or by you, to explain you another transportation method so stay with me with the next chapter and we'll discuss about other transportation methods as well